We are back again from the Ngai Hub Cultural Village. This is your show, Sankofa. I'm your host, Lolo. And I'm joined by Mr. August Maletsky. I'll just give him a chance to introduce himself before we go right into, into it. it. Mr. Mr. Malets. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm August Maletsky, the director of African Labor and Human Rights Center. Um, I don't think there's much more to my credentials than that. Yeah, no, it's not necessary. We know you. Actually, that's that's basically a formality. We know you. I'm sure most of my, or everybody that watches this knows you. Mr. Malet, I decided to rope you in when I saw uh, of your plans to uh, host a march against the banks and the corrupt civil litigation systems that you, that you say. And uh, our talk will basically be around that, around this march. What prompted it? What is your personal interest in this? And all of the factors around it. Do you mind explaining the idea of the march for a start? Yes, there are two ways that we can obtain a solution to a crisis okay. or to a dispute. Okay. You can either fight, pick up arms and fight, mm -hmm. plant bombs left, right and center, mm -hmm. and hear explosions in the east and in the west, like we did in 19, I think, 84, when Atlantic Meat Market was bombed, mm -hmm. and the post office in Wolfish Bay was bombed at the same time. I think mm -hmm. the younger generation may not remember this. But there is one way of conflict resolution. March. Uh, I mean, uh, violence. Okay. okay. The other one is a peaceful mm. way of conflict resolution. Mm. And I subscribe to the best of my ability, mm. even if I'm put to the ultimate test, mm. to a lawful means of bringing about peace bringing about a peaceful resolution and a meaningful resolution to disputes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had the situation of rules of court being in direct violation of the Constitution of the Republic of Namibia, mm -hmm. Article 12, the right to a fair trial. Mm -hmm. Since independence, we have had administrative officers, you know, the clerk of the magistrate's court, the register of the high court, giving judgments that were meant to be in terms of the constitution granted only by courts of law, that is the magistrate's court, the high court and the Supreme Court of Namibia. Mm -hmm. These things went on for almost two, 22 years until the rules of, of courts were changed, of the high court were changed. Mm. And sections of the rules of the magistrate's court were also amended to recognize the mischief, the violation of the constitution of Namibia. Mm -hmm. So now for 22 years, right? Banks, mm -hmm. the financial system in this country mm -hmm. benefited and enriched themselves from unconstitutionally obtained judgments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Against litigants and people that due to the prohibitive cost of litigation, Mm -hmm. due to the fact that they couldn't afford lawyers that had the guts to stand up against the financial fraternity, mm -hmm. had their constitutional rights eroded. This happened on a daily basis for 22 years. Mm -hmm. And after 22 years, I think, and with, with the amendment of the rules of the High Court, it stopped. But no, it didn't stop. It continued. It still continues today. Mm -hmm. People are still losing their houses. The rules of the High Court, Rule 108, special applications that need to be made and for the judge to inquire into the, into the position of a primary uh, homeowner mm -hmm. and what the primary homeowner is, what the position of the primary homeowner is. Mm -hmm. That's academic. Mm -hmm. It's meaningless. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, if you are working at Rossing Uranium, right? Mm -hmm. And the bank grants you 
a home loan. Uh-huh. And you are paying for this home loan of 20 years for 15 years. Uh-huh. And after 15 years, COVID, because of COVID, you, ha- you are retrenched. Uh-huh. You fall in default for three, six, four, five months. Uh-huh. The bank still goes back to the high court and says you are in breach of contract. Uh-huh. Takes judgment against you uh-huh. and sells your property. And you know who buys your property at the judicial auction? Okay. The bank. The bank. The bank itself buys your property. Is that not conflict of interest? Uh-huh. It's conflict of interest, but it's normal in Namibia. It's okay. violence provoking, stoking violence. It is telling the people of Namibia to, to make petrol bombs and to, to throw at banking institutions, to break into you know, these banking buildings and stuff. That is, that's what is happening in Namibia. It's an open invitation for violence. That is what is happening in this country. Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to do is to prevent a situation like, you know, petrol bombs being thrown at First uh, National okay. Bank, mm-hmm. people being killed, loss of unnecessary life. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to prevent anarchy in this country. So therefore, okay. we have chosen not the path of petrol bombs, mm-hmm. not the path of the gun, but we have chosen to peacefully demonstrate in masse throughout the Republic of Namibia, mm. telling our lawmakers, mm. telling our leaders, because everything starts and ends with our leadership, yeah. that what they are doing and what they allowed to happen under their auspices mm. is wrong. Okay. okay. Mr. Males. I take specific interest in your case. Here's the reason why. I am a proponent of, you know, and part of why I do what I do is because I want our generation to challenge and to review all the systems that we, that govern us. Because we are living on systems as we have received it from the apartheid and colonial regimes. With minor policy changes here and there, but the the systems and institutions are those that we have inherited. So I am of the opinion anyway that we should reverse it and review all these all industries and all systems that we've inherited, including the banking uh, industry. But tell me, while we have systems, institutions and processes in Namibia, why do you think or why are you taking personal interest in this issue? And why? What, what motivates you to fight for the masses here? Or is there a personal agenda? Uh, tell me, what is, what is, what is driving your, your motive? Is there something in it for me? Yes. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. It's a brilliant question. Yeah. What is in it for me? is that future generations will stand up and say that there was one man called August Maletsky Mm -hmm. who was bold enough to tell these people to their faces that they were corrupt. That is what is in, that is what is in it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another thing in it for me. And the other thing that is in it for me is to save countless men and women from Mm -hmm. being humiliated in front of their spouses and their children. Right? from losing their homes, from being kicked out and from having their assets thrown around in full view of their children Mm -hmm. and those that they take care of and to see their lifelong savings put on trucks and ferried away to be sold for pennies, to see society disintegrate as a result thereof right but is that not what we sign up for when we sign on the dotted lines when we take upon take up these loans and stuff no 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 that's not what we signed up for are those not you. are those not the conditions that no no let me tell you something okay, okay. when you when you when you and I, I understand if i understand you correctly you mean to say if you take out a mortgage bond mm-hmm. you make peace with the fact that you are obliged to settle this bond within a specific period of time yes 100 percent if there is the way that you want me to understand you then in fact so be it you you are right you're spot on Mm -hmm. 
Mm. But my question is, mm -hmm. if you settled a mortgage bond of 20 years, if you religiously paid for this bond over a period of 15 years, mm. right? The bank itself that financed this bond, this immovable property, mm -hmm. has a bond registered over the title deed, mm -hmm. a bond registered over the title deed at the deeds office. Mm -hmm. So when you sell the house, the first thing that must happen is the house is, the, the bond holder, mm -hmm. Must, debt must be settled. Yeah. In other words, the bank is a secured creditor mm -hmm. in respect of this house. Yes. Now imagine you bought this house 15 years ago for $100,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you owe the bank $600,000 because of not having paid for 18 months. Mm -hmm. But the value of the house is $3.5 million. Mm -hmm. And the bond registered in favor of this house tells you that nobody can lay or nobody can 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 lay ownership to this house because First National Bank, Bank Vintuk or Standard Bank are the bondholders, mm. secured bondholders. Mm. In other words, they have collateral, they have security. Why should banks sell people's homes to themselves, resell it at huge profit margins, and claim whatever difference there is still outstanding mm. from the debtor. Is that what, what, is that why we have banks to exploit? Is that what you signed for? No, mm. that's not what you signed for. Definitely. Fact remains, with every year that passes by, mm -hmm. generally, the value of immovable property over the past 50 years mm. has gone up. Right? Mm -hmm. So whilst your debt decreases over this, the period of years, mm -hmm. the value of your property increases. So what does it tell you? The collateral, the security that the bank holds mm -hmm. exceeds the mm -hmm. debt, your defaults yeah. by far, by far. I get you. So why must they now come and sell your house because you, you're in default of 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 repaying the the, the mortgage bond I for six you. months or eighteen months. I get you. Huh? Did you, who would sign up for something like that? Mm. If you want a loan from a bank today, say yes. If you have somebody that can give us collateral, we'll give you six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And if your house is valued at one million dollars, they will gladly give you six hundred thousand dollars because they have collateral in respect of that house that is worth one, one million dollars. Mm. Why? Why then don't they apply the same principle in respect of debts that you have? Mm. Essentially, you are not bankrupt. Your yeah. assets, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Your assets, which principally are constituted of the immovable property that you have, exceed the debts that you have by far, by far, by far. Yeah. But because banks have portfolios that they themselves invest in, mm -hmm. right? They choose to sell off your property mm -hmm. for next to nothing mm -hmm. to themselves. Nowadays, banks buy the property mm -hmm. in conflict of interest mm -hmm. at judicial auctions. And I'm saying in, in conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Our judges, mm -hmm. who are these, the, the, the upper guardians of the Constitution, mm -hmm. are aware of this, but they don't intervene. They don't interfere. They let these things happen. Why do you think that is? Well, because the only conclusion that I make is they perhaps don't care about it. Mm -hmm. They're absent-minded about it. They're not affected. They're not affected by it. But then we must also draw the distinction. Mm -hmm. There are judges that are only doing criminal cases. Mm -hmm. There are judges that are only doing civil cases. Mm -hmm. So with the greatest of respect, this does not apply to all of our judges. Okay. But to ju it, it is of specific significance mm -hmm. to judges that deal with civil matters. Mm. I mean, sometimes you find a judge, mm -hmm. right? Who has been the chairman of the board of Standard Bank. Okay? He carries a platinum card of Standard Bank in his back pocket. Mm -hmm. And then he sits on the bench passing judgment in favor of Standard Bank in the High Court of Namibia. 
I mean, what <laughs> type of justice do you mean? You must declare your interest. Yeah. Judge Brian Olin from the Supreme Court bench. Many, many years ago, mm. I'm saying from the Supreme Court bench, told Mr. Hewat Bierkes, told all the parties that were present in the Supreme Court, mm. that he had a personal friendly relationship with Mr. Hewat Bierkes, who was one of the litigants before the Supreme Court, mm. his father. Mm. And he asked them, is it fine if he sits? But he declares his interest, he declares the fact that he knows Mr. Bierkes, mm. his father. Mm. And as a result of only that fact, he was prepared to recuse himself as a Supreme Court judge. Mm -hmm. But the parties agreed and consented that, no, it doesn't matter. You can sit Mr. As, a, as, a, as a judge. But in this country, we have judges carrying platinum cards of banks, mm -hmm. right? Prestige members of certain banks granting default judgments and judgments in favor of banks left, right and center. Conflict of interest is just normal. Mm -hmm. I get you. I get you. You know, uh, one thought that comes to mind is now that you're explaining all the ways in which the banks actually benefit from uh, mispayments or perhaps defaults from uh, their clients. I've always battled with this idea of there's a million dollar house, then you have a million dollar car. Car you can pay off in five years, but the house that bond has to be for 20, 20, 20, 20 to 25 to 30 years in some cases. And so, and that's another thing that we have, uh, we're holding on to as we have inherited it. How does it actually serve us today? If, or why is it that, why can't we have the same deals that you, for example, that makes it possible for you to pay off a million dollar car in five years, why can't I have that deal with the house? I know it's not a question for you to answer, but definitely it is something that, uh, or oh, what would you perhaps say about well, that? You see, you see, the thing is, it's a matter of recycling home ownership, right? Mm -hmm. There is no logical reason why you cannot settle a bond in respect of your house as quickly as you settle a, a debt in respect of your car. There's no logical reason for that. Mm -hmm. But you see, the institutions that we have in this country, the institutions that our lawmakers have in place, mm -hmm. the institutions like uh, the Bank of Namibia, mm -hmm. Namfisa, uh, have chief executive officers. Eh? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Mr. Kawakab, who one thinks is a very respectable person, but is actually a hollow, you know, a meaningless ninkom poop. And I'm saying this with the greatest of respect because everything he does does not positively impact on the life of Namibians, except for, you know, the Bank of Namibia being a rubber stamp mm -hmm. of the South African Reserve Bank, which in any event it is. It never interferes. Mm. It never effectively regulates mm. the banks in Namibia. Are you saying the Bank of Namibia is not working in the interest of the public at large? What can, are you saying? Can you, can you give me an example when it did that? Can you give me an example when, when the Bank of Namibia took punitive action against First National Bank, Standard Bank or Bank Ventuk? Okay. Mr. Malays, we're going to continue. We're going to come back on the Bank of Namibia issue right after the break. Okay, Mr. Malitz, yeah. we are back with the second and last part of our podcast here. Tell me, in your view, you know, we have to, we have to talk about issues and then also solutions or what we think can be possible solutions. In your view, you mentioned uh, the Bank of Namibia. Where the Bank of Namibia is basically failing us, let's say. Let's, 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 let's put it that way. Now, from a lawmaker's perspective, all our instruments that we have in place, parliament, what have you how can we oh uh, from 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 on on policy level shall i say uh bring in or amend instruments that can be in favor of the layman if that makes sense yeah you see 
When I, when we speak about lawmakers, yes, we're talking about members of parliament. Yes, they make laws, they make policies, mm -hmm. etc., etc. Yes. But the biggest problem that I have with the mem with our members of parliament is that they are more preoccupied with you know being called honourable and uh, sir and you know these titles that goes with it. Mm. From me to them. They are a bunch of useless bandits that care absolutely nothing for the man on the street. Is this now the entire lawmaker fraternity? All of them, all of them in parliament, including from SWAPO to LPM to DTA to Venani, all of them. Okay. Let me give you an let me give you an example. Okay. When did any one of them stand up in a court of law and say? That this August house, incidentally, my name is August. It means very important, okay. but I don't. Re I don't regard myself as very important. Okay. That this August house must do something about judgment debtors being obliged to repay the debts that they have, right? In terms of court judgments, with twenty percent interest. What? Did you hear a lawmaker stand up in parliament and say, but this issue needs to be addressed? Because how can you invest money with First National Bank and the maximum investment rate is like 10, 12, 13 percent per annum? But once First National Bank or Bank Ventuk, with their criminal syndicate Wiederkota and Hoveka, obtains a judgment against you, you must repay that amount with 20% per annum. Not only that, you cannot, instead of paying the money directly unto the bank who obtained the judgment against you, right? You have to, or the culture is that you must now go and pay at the lawyers of that specific judgment creditor, the bank in most cases. And this lawyer from the $2,000 you pay must collect a two hundred dollars mm. collection commission mm. plus extra fees mm. for calls reminding you, sir, you need to pay this amount and this amount. Please don't forget. Which, which is also you, built. Yes, which is also built. Mm -hmm. Now, from the two thousand mm. dollars, right? Mm. Standard Bank or the creditor only receives one thousand two hundred dollars or perhaps five hundred dollars because everything else goes to the legal practitioners. Mm. I mean, which lawmaker challenged? I mean, when did they bring about any meaningful change that directly benefits the man on the street, the man who suffers the severe consequences of judgments in courts of law that they cannot afford to stand in? Tell me, no, did Bernardo Swarboy do that? Did Henny Sabeb do that? The, 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 the youngsters, the, the young generation of Namibian lawyers that we have, did they do anything meaningful to bring about drastic changes within the actual sphere of life where people live and feel the consequences of civil judgments against them. Did they do something like that? Not one, sir, for your information, not one. So as far as I'm concerned, all of them, mm. all of them in parliament mm. have been captured by white capital. And when I say white capital, I don't mean white people. Yeah. I mean white monopoly capital. All of them. And for as far as I'm concerned, yes, you can replace them all with me. With you. Yes. And you will see the difference. Mr. Malets, do you have any political ambitions? We know that 2024 is around the corner. And uh, uh, you're beginning to talk like uh, as if you're starting to campaign here. Do you have any political uh, uh, ambitions for to stand alone as an independent candidate, candidate somewhere and want to appear now as if very concerned about the public and what what? Well, I can tell you one thing, sir. Uh, I can at any time, it's my constitutional right, stand as an independent candidate. Okay as the, for the, the next president of this country. President. 
Yes, and I can also tell you one thing, matter of factly, hmm. not one, not one of the potential candidates hmm. would be able to sit in public and debate contemporary politics with me. Not, I'm saying not one. Are you challenging them? It's not a challenge. <laughs> I'm inviting them. I'm challenging them. I'm putting it to them from the youngest to the oldest generation. Okay. Not one would be able to face me. I mean, they, I invited them for more than 27 years now to share a public forum with me, mm. but they declined it. But let me come back to your answer. Okay. At present, I have no aspirations for political office. Mm. I aspire mm -hmm. for a leadership, mm. right? That would revolutionize the landscape of Namibia for the benefit of all of its people. And yes, in though, along those terms, mm. I am aspiring to be, or I have always been an active participant in the politics of this country. By the way, two and a half years before the 2014 elections, mm. We won a judgment in the High Court before who's, Mr. Justice who's Miller, who's Aug uh, August 2012. That okay. was two and a half years before the 2014 elections when President Hage Kengop was elected as president. Okay. In fact, 24 hours or so before the elections, hmm. I was in the High Court fighting against the electronic voting machines. Okay. But still, I did not participate, despite numerous invitations. By Swapo, hmm. by all the other parties, I declined. I said, no, I have a conscience to live with. And it's hmm. not my time yet. Hmm. God knows when my time will be there, hmm. when, when it would be my time to join politics. Hmm. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Hmm. But as of now, I'm standing up for Swapo, for DTA, for, for irrespective of what political affairs, party you belong to, what religion you belong to, that to me doesn't matter. Mm. The skin color is not of any significance to me. Mm. Your politics is your politics. Mm. The issue here is righteous fairness and justice mm. that must be applied without any discrimination. And defended. Yes. Mm -hmm. I get you. Just to come back on the bureaucratic, I want to say, channels of, you know, um, default uh, when I default, then going through the lawyers, and then you need to, uh, 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 then you need to pay for the lawyers, and uh, so at the end of the day, there's a lot more cost added to your initial debt thing. What again? What do you recommend there for that process to to uh, to still be fluent, but for the bank also to recover its money? All the people should, as from this moment, stop paying their debts at, at the offices of legal practitioners. I don't recommend, I'm stating it as a matter of fact, it's advice, unsolicited advice. Let them honor the judgments that they have against them by making direct payments to the judgment creditors and by keeping proof thereof. Mm -hmm. Because what the lawyers nowadays do is because, you know, they studied for four or five years law, mm -hmm. right? But they do things that a standard seven or standard eight person is supposed to do. Mr. So-and-so, and so, please we be reminded that you have to pay this amount at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. 20 times. And at the end of the month, they charge you $700 for the calls they made. Mm -hmm. When are you going to settle this debt? Mm -hmm. Stop paying any debt at lawyers. Go straight to the creditor. Make payments and keep your receipts. So that when these lawyers challenge you in court, you say, sorry, my lord. This is proof of, of my payments mm. to the creditor. I didn't want to give col collection commissions to people who studied, right, to practice law. To practice law doesn't mean debt collecting. Mm. It means positively contributing towards the development of our jurisprudence. But then is it not within the rights of the, let's use the bank in this case, to use a collection uh, uh, means now that they couldn't retrieve the money from the client, are they not legally backed 
when they do that. No, they are not. What prejudice would they suffer? Just tell me, what prejudice would you suffer if I owe you five thousand hmm. dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And I pay the one thousand dollars that I agreed to pay to you directly to you hmm. instead of the intermediary that you want me to pay to. What prejudice do you suffer? What harm do you suffer? Okay. Obviously, there has been attempts yeah. from my side to get this money from you, which did not come as per the agreement, which prompted me to go to my debt collector yeah. and uh, via him must now try to retrieve my money. You see, so it's most now not in all cases that banks, banks also at times take a few months, you know, before they start to take these steps. So do you see that as being still not lenient enough? Mr. the mallet. I can just tell you, sir, how lenient is it if you buy somebody's house that is worth six million dollars mm. for one million dollars at a judicial auction, mm. right? And you sell it yeah. for five million dollars Pocket the four million dollars that you make, like Widerkoot and Oveka yeah. and Bank Vinduk did in a specific case that I know of. It's also on Veritas. Yeah. And still sue these people for the outstanding balance. You call it leniency? Okay. Mr. Malisa gave you. Now, my last point. In terms of, you know, um, all these banks that we are there, that, that we have got out there. Mm -hmm. Man, on a personal level, I also feel that uh, uh, these banks are not really serving. They are actually, they are businesses. Yes. And they are operating on business models. Yeah. Is it not perhaps time that we as young, especially black Africans, begin to think in terms of our own financial systems, creating our own financial instruments, banking systems that will work for us if the current systems are not working for us? No, I don't think so. I think uh, we, must, we, must, we must depart from the concept of, of, of this is my area, this mm. is where I live and, 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 and this is the place that is only meant for me. Okay. We live in a global village. Okay. And when you enter into my territory, mm -hmm. right, you must respect my culture, mm -hmm. my rules, and my regulations. Okay. We have people that we elect. Okay. And those people that we elect know the circumstances that we come from. Mm -hmm. They know what UIS looks like. Okay. They know what all these constituencies in, in Dores looks like. They know what Ogumbaya looks like. Mm -hmm. They know what Ongo, uh, 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 what is it? Ongolumbashe looks like. They know what uh, uh, Oshikango looks like. Mm -hmm. They know what, you know, they, they, they know these things. Mm -hmm. These are our elected members of parliament. Yes. Why do we elect them? To cater for our needs, to make policies around our needs, to make our lives better. So, so that, that takes the responsibility away from, away from us. us. This is what you say. No. To a certain extent, we delegate, right? unto them the authority to on our behalf make policies and laws that control these banks that regulate these banks but doesn't mean that we should sit back and give them a free right we should remain constant participants in the politics of this country by monitoring those that we elect into power I'm of the opinion that we should begin to own the banks. Well, why not? Then we work out modalities that suit us and that work for us. Well, Bank Vinduk, I thought Bank Vinduk was a Namibian bank and, you know, was one of the friendliest banks until I, I, I realized belatedly so that, uh, mm. you know, I was fooled by the name Bank Vinduk. In fact, of all the banks that I came across, it is the, it is the, it is the most cruelest institution that I've ever come across, together with their with a criminal syndicate group of lawyers 
uh, which I so love. I would love them to sue me so that I can prove them, you know, <laughs> prove everything that I said about them in a court of law. Mm. Uh, I actually dare them to do that. Right? I realized that you can't even compare First National Bank to Bank Vintuk. No. Bank Vintuk is the worst financial institution in this country. Why? From my experience, mm. what is supposed to be a Namibian bank? A bank that carries the logo of Vintuk, our capital city, mm. is the worst criminal. So what are you talking about? Mr. Malet, there have been, I know personally that there have been attempts on your life. Yes. And uh, not one or two, but more. And what what makes you such a radical? What why why do you think you can speak your mind and uh, without fear? And what what is that thing that that removes the fear from you? Tell me. You doing you, because you would say things that uh, people wouldn't dare, you know, especially in the public space and the social media space. I mean, what is it? I guess. And that's my last question. I, I, yeah, I guess it's a glorification of compassion. Okay. I guess it's it's a compassionate hatred. Mm. A compassionate hatred mm. to see innocent people victimized. A background that I come from. Okay. I don't know whether that it does it does you are actually a revolutionary in some way okay anyway uh, Mr. Malets I would like to thank you for your time and uh, as always I will I will call you in from time to time I like talking to you I like people that express themselves and that go out there and do, actually do things because many people only talk so, yeah, uh, from that aspect, if there's perhaps anything that you would like to say, yeah, about the march, yeah. please, anything that, uh, that we didn't say, uh, the date and the time and so on. Yeah, it's the 26th of August, 2023. 26th of August. 26th of August. Is it now strategically timed with the Heroes Day? You thing? see, this will be the first Hero, Heroes Day since, nine, since independence. Okay. Yes, all of the others were uh, academic. <laughs> okay. They were celebrating people who died in Ongolombashe, you know, mm -hmm. uh, forgetting about those that were humiliated in the dungeons of Lubango, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Those who were academic, okay. uh, were tribalist, and, and that's it. Different. This one mm -hmm. is not going to celebrate one tribe. Okay. It's not going to celebrate politics. Okay. It is going to celebrate the first step towards economic emancipation of the Namibian people. Mm -hmm. the f we are setting the stage, mm -hmm. meaningfully so, mm -hmm. a heroic stage for economic emancipation, mm -hmm. a stage on which we shall begin to build mm -hmm. for the future generations of this country. Mr. Malets, I would like to thank you. You're most welcome. On that note, help me thank Mr. Maletsky for Again, another informative episode. And as always, my very much sincere appreciation to all my viewers, subscribers. And on that note, signing out from Sankofa Studio. Thank you.